Good morning, my name is Justin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I play guitar on songs in Nashville and in my spare time I make videos and I'm actually starting to really enjoy it. The typical session day in Nashville starts at 10 o'clock. Uh, Nashville runs on a 10 to 6 schedule so our weeks as players, our weeks look like any number of those 15 slots being booked, right? So you're either booked 10 to 1, 2 to 5, or six to nine, or all three. That's called a triple. Um, any two of them is a double. Sometimes you have the dreaded split where you have a 10 to one and then a six to nine. So you can fight your way through traffic to go back home and work on some overdub that somebody's waiting on you to finish. You know, it's just kind of, you know, it, it's, it's all over the place. I like to call it consistently inconsistent. So for me, some of those slots uh, are times when I make videos, you know, and sometimes I make a video on a song I'm being paid to play on. That's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Uh, other times I just get up really early and uh, after my workout and after I take kids to school, I just come back home and make a video before I leave for sessions. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, I have another song from a subscriber and uh, this guy's name is Steven. He sent me a song named Marie. He sent me two songs. This is one of them. His questions in his email and the whole reason that he sent these songs to me is he just needs someone else's ears on what he has. He's at the point where he wants to have it mixed and mastered and done. But he's also <laughs> questioning everything because he's done it all himself and he doesn't have any other input from other people, some other perspective other than his own subjective uh, field of view, right? This is really common for people, you know? Uh, producers, writers, players, artists, people will spend so much time and be inside of a song so long that it just requires them to step back for a minute and see if they've really accomplished what they were trying to set out to accomplish or to bounce it off of someone else's ears, you know? There's a, there are a lot of producers in town who play, um, they'll play keys, they'll play guitar, they'll program drums. Some of the gigs that I get for recording on songs are just people saying, you know, I, I like my parts, they could be better executed, but I just want to hear what you're hearing. I've been involved in this song so long, like, what do you think? So it feels like Steven's at that place where, uh, where he just isn't totally sure, you know, what's going on. And he even said in his email, I'm not opposed to potentially starting over and hiring a band, a session band, to play play these songs. So um, we're going to listen through. You know, I always wear cans and I always play a guitar and then I write a chart and listen through and offer some thoughts and play through some ideas. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've got my old 335 here, 1982. Um, very cool guitar. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I have just a little bit of reverb from the uh, Boss Fender 63 spring pedal. Other than that, everything that you're hearing is from the Analog Outfitters, so uh, the Sarge amp. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bit dirty, that's all neck pickup. Here's a bridge pickup. I feel like I always play the same kind of thing when I pick up the guitar, just to give you an example of my sound. I'm not sure if that's getting old or if it's uh, just familiar, you know, like a warm blanket. <laughs> so let's listen to Steven's song. This is called Marie. This is very raccoon to me already. Marie is always in motion. <laughs> and I say, what's all that commotion? She says, don't give it no thought. Pay up no 
mine That's when I know she's found trouble If I was a smart man, I'd say make my own go Let her boo Let her boo She's short, but she's sighted Me, I'm flat blind but I can see that she's very raccooner. Your Marie, do me ever tell me? So, darling, tell me what you need me to be. She says, uh, the only words Whoa. I can <laughs> offer you. If you want to lose yourself, to do your own heart to choose. She says, lose your soul to save it. I find it fairly easy to do And you can bet your life I made a hard wife Who don't, don't see the see humor, humor In a way to preserve food I'm in a bottle Rolling home Green is a pencil on the phone Asking can we make it together Oh, it's very cool. You be ever playing me. So, darling, tell me what you need me to be. She says, no, the only words I can offer you. If you want to lose yourself into your own heart, the truth, she says, lose your soul to say, little grace, we're going to make it. I said, grace and short supply, darling, you the apple of my eye, but then you tell me the grace flows like wine, and forget the irony of that metaphor, but I thought with grace, there's always more, and Marie says, dang boy, if you heard all that, how do we come to all this point in our life? They say grace don't come cheap, but it's free. If I count the calls, it seems like all of me. I guess we'll see what we see. Oh, that's so cool. We, darling, you need everything to me. So you just tell me what you need me to be. She says, uh, the only words Crazy chord. that I can offer you. I think it goes to the... If you want to lose yourself into your own heart, she says, Here's your soul, your soul to save it. With little grace, we gotta make it. Ah, and that's the end. Yeah, this reminds me so much of this. Feels like it would be at home on the Boomer's Story record which is one of my absolute favorite Rakuter records. I especially love the, the intro. I mean, that, man. There's also another Rakuter song that he plays in open G. I'm, I'm blanking on the title. I know how to play it in open G. I'm not in open G. Uh, anyway, it seems very Rakuter and also kind of the band, you know, it's just that, that classic, there's, there's kind of an Appalachian, um, Americana thing going on. That's some of my absolute favorite music is stuff that has really, really deep old roots in American folklore and, and folk music. And even, even some sensibilities from jazz, which you get from the harmonic movement in the song. I didn't even begin to write a chart. There's some crazy, crazy moves going on. I think I got the form figured out. I have some thoughts on how it's recorded. First, I will say the song is super cool and your voice is awesome, Stephen. Um, you just, 
there just sounds like a a whole lot of experience and a wealth of soul in in the vocal track, which is amazing. I know it's unmixed. You haven't sent it off yet, but it seems like it seems like like everything's panned really hard, and I feel like my attention is kind of just going everywhere. And I know a little bit of that is idiomatic, you know, it's it's part of the style of the song. And some of Rise stuff is, is similar to like people are, are playing multiple things or he's playing multiple tracks. Um, by the way, it'd be amazing to hear like J Jim Keltner style drum track on this, you know. Um, but I just feel like I feel like there's so much movement in so many different things. There's the guitar panned hard left. There's the higher guitar that's tucked back, that's panned right. There's the slide acoustic, and, and some of those notes are a little out. There's the um, mandolin as well. We have kind of a joke here in Nashville. Uh, just fix it in the mix. <laughs> you cannot do that. But I do think that, that some of the issues that I'm kind of hearing with where my attention is bouncing everywhere could be helped in a proper mix. So I understand that, that the song is not at that point. But I also want to hear things take a back seat to the lyric. Like there are various lines that popped out to me, but upon first listen, I don't really know exactly what the whole song's about, just because there's so many cool things happening that kind of take me away from the lyric. It just seems, you know, Rye's whole style was Here's this amazing melodic, open-tuned, well, melody, you know, of the song in the intro. And then when he's singing, everything takes a back seat to the lyric. And whether there's mandolin on the track or, you know, if he's leading from electric or from acoustic, it's all one guy, and so it sort of naturally happens. To me, it sounds like there's a bunch of overdubs. It's all you. They're all really cool but let's pick our spots. And I want to stress to you that I'm not coming at this like someone who makes their living in commercial music where we really put a shine and a radio polish on things. Like I'm intentionally trying to not put that hat on when I listen to this. Everything I'm saying comes from the fan of this style of music who's listened to lots of old records in the 70s. Oh, like, I'm a huge fan of the band, their live Rock of Ages album, so great. Like, just, it's just so good. I get, I get some of that vibe here. And again, like, there's, there's a lot going on on those records. There's a lot going on on, on Ry Cooter's records, but it's all very intentional. Like, there's a, the way that it's crafted around the lyric is very, very intentional. And it seems effortless because it all just sounds so good and there's so much happening. Well, then you go do try to do that yourself. You know, you're really into all the parts you're playing and then they just kind of happen everywhere. And so this just feels a little bit jumbled. Some of the pocket between the things. You mentioned in your email that you're not, your rhythm isn't the greatest. I would just say that uh, some of the stuff sort of steps outside of the pocket. The pocket's really important in this style of music. And so th those are my only, my only things, that, that everybody's playing all the time in a way that, that kind of pulls my attention, you know? I didn't, I didn't get the story of the overall song by, on my first listen because there's so many cool things happening and I'm just kind of pulled in various places. Uh, and then the pocket, which is right behind the story is, is the second most important thing to me on this style of, of stuff. So I would just say um, those two things could, could be examined more closely. I know you spent a lot of time on this and I'm really not trying to tear it down. It's super cool. I'm just thinking out loud, if, if I were on a session with a group of players and if we were all listening to this, what, were, what would be the suggestions that we would throw out? Like we would frame the vocal. We would make sure everything's in the pocket, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know if you want to go back to the drawing board on this and hire a band and have it recut, you know, um, with all these ideas in mind, or if you want to go back to the drawing board at your place and just sort of try to lock yourself into some of these parts, you know, and, um, 
get it a little rhythmically tighter, have things step back a little bit around the vocal. That's all. I think it's I think it's really cool. It's a really cool track. Don't get me wrong. It's a cool song. It's just uh, you know, a little little jumbled feeling in terms of where my attention is pulled and then the pocket isn't necessarily there which you're already aware of. So I feel like I'm not giving you any new information. It's really cool and the chords I think are really awesome. There's like a a move where you start on the one over three. You were saying in your email that your chords are crazy and you don't know if session guys would be like, oh, I don't want to do this. Man, we, we see crazier stuff than this all the time. I tracked an Earth, Wind & Fire song last year or the year before and our session leader actually wrote a number chart for it. Pretty crazy. You know, if you just, if you think of it as changing keys and call the key changes, it makes sense rather than just saying, well, the whole thing's in F and these are all the chords. Well, it starts in F and then it goes to A flat and then it goes to E flat or whatever. I, I don't remember what it is. This is nothing outside the realm of what we are comfortable with and capable of playing, you know, and everybody is such a fan of music in general and particularly the really organic 70s records, you know, in this style. Like I would even put like it's a slightly more acoustic um, version of something Little Feet would do, too. You know, I hear Little Feet. I hear the the Greg Allman laid back record from 73, which is so Good. I'm such a huge fan of that record. His Jackson Brown cover is, <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but yeah, Ry Cooter, the band, all, all that stuff. Everybody loves that, you know. I know it's expensive to like call a band in Nashville to try to cut this for you, but we are willing and able, my friend. So um, I guess I guess I want to kind of look at just the last last minute or so of the song one more time. Just listen through these changes because they're really cool. Like the writing is fantastic and your singing is ridiculously great. And all your ideas for the parts are super cool too. They can just be sort of more intentional, you know, about where they are, what they do at each part of the song and, and how they transition. So let's let's listen. But didn't you tell me the grease flows like wine? Forget the irony of that metaphor, but I thought with grace, there's always more. And Marie says, dang boy, if you heard all that, how do we come to all this point in our life? They say grace don't come cheap, but it's free. But if I count the calls, it seems like all of me. I guess we'll see what we see. That's so cool. All you need everything you just tell me what you need me to be. She says, uh, the only words that I can offer you. All you need everything you you just tell me what you need me to be. She says, uh, the only words that I can offer you. All you need everything you, you just tell me what you need to be. She says, uh, the only words that I can offer you. That's really cool. Using a four minor as the beginning of a two, five, one. The way you get from F sharp to A in the song is super cool. So there's kind of a move, uh, a uh, six minor, five, or it's like one over five, or it might even be your, your four over five uh, kind of thing. So you kind of walk. That's two, five, right? That's a, that's a two, five, one in A, two minor. He's playing five over seven, but it's still a five chord, it's still two, five, one.
Really great stuff, man. I mean, there's some really advanced harmonic things happening. Your voice is great. It sounds like Boomer's story to me, you know. This is super cool. I'm a fan. So uh, keep it up. Take the, what I said in, into consideration. And um, maybe, maybe we put a band together for you and cut this here in town. Or maybe you have that done somewhere else, you know, if your budget doesn't allow. Uh, or maybe you just sort of revisit each track and try to help it fit around the vocal. The vocal is awesome and the structure is awesome and all the parts are super cool. They can just be more intentional. So um, that's all I got. I'll see you guys later.